Well, hello there and welcome to the Bedroom of the Dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers for January 14th, the Day of the Integrator. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the Day of the Integrator. We have us an image of, what could it be? Boom! It's a double-sided stud bolt between two uh, Greco-Roman themed columns. That's right. Is that a uh, very, is that an adequate representation of the day of the integrator? Hey, who's to say? An integration of two different technologies from two different time periods, perhaps. Who's to say? But not altogether all too important. Uh, what is important, however, is it's January 14th and hence it's somebody's birthday. And so with that in mind, me wishing you a happy birthday. That's what's important. That's right. But, you know, if this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may happen to be, if that is the case, I just want to say I hope you had a happy birthday. Uh, but for everybody else who's joining us today randomly or perhaps more ideally to celebrate the January 14th birthday, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's roll some dice. That's right. This is the Diecast a birthday broadcast, so uh, I like to live up to the namesake. But I do so, more importantly, for synchronicity's sake. And here we rolled, oh, a four and a one, four and a five. A little synchronous there. We'll get to why that is a little bit later. But what is synchronicity, you're probably wondering? Well, my friends, a lot of times we get out into this world and, uh, you know what, we're very narrow or laser of focus. We got the blinders on to what's going on around us to say, you know, we might notice things, but we don't really make them a concern. That being said, I've heard it told that the universe will put things in our path to help us realize our goals or manifest our aspirations. But we have to know what those things are. So we have to have the blinders off, which is kind of difficult for a lot of us to do, me included. That being said, this is a little bit of a uh, aid, if you like, to help us take those blinders off, to recognize those signs that the universe has given us by putting a sign out into the universe, one that's mutually agreed upon, uh, one that we can't help but notice. That's right, your daily numbers. So uh, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. The intention is there. You're one in your four, four, or five. Uh, but you know what? Go raid that Yahtzee set that you got at home that you never use. Grab a couple dice out of there. Roll yourself some numbers. Also use it to, uh, what do you call, uh, ascribe directional values and time limits with which to go in the directions that you figure out. That having been said, you get your dice, you, uh, figure out a place to, I don't know, take a little bit of a synchronicity walk from. Maybe the town square, some place you like to go. Maybe some place you haven't explored before. It's your birthday, let's do something fun. The whole idea here too is to maybe see, taste, touch, feel, or intuit a little bit of magic. That's right, sounds a little bit bit hair brain but hey let's get after it. let's see what we see once you pick your place pick your poison if you like yeah and you get your directional value time limit set up head on out but like i said take those blinders off maybe uh, the day might start to take on a little bit of a theme you might start to see things creep up not just your numbers who's to say maybe you start seeing some double-sided studs out there or double-threaded studs there or some uh, greek roman uh, roman uh, columns right now nah, those might be a little more common but uh, at least you would think but maybe not so I was to say, maybe you get off after your time value, maybe the time limit elapses, and hey, you're not seeing anything. Maybe it's just the everyday goings on, or a, a rather desolate town. I've seen that happen before. Uh, but that being said, take a moment, compose yourself, and just start looking around your environment, see what you see. Maybe you happen to notice you're on Fifth Avenue. Oh, I would use that as an indication that you're on the right path, because a lot of times we got our noses down. We don't necessarily see where we're going. You, something like that, a little bit of detail like that might pass you right by. But we got to be open to those things. So you take that in a stride. I'm on the right path. Roll yourself another time value, directional value as well. Maybe at this point, oh, maybe now the theme starts to pop up. Maybe you see a bus bench with a hardware store advertisement on it. And it just so happens to have a bolt. So, uh, you know, it'd be pretty rare to see a, a double threaded bolt. But you know what? Maybe so. Maybe that's what the marketing team came up with that time. Uh, I'd say take it in stride. Keep going. Maybe at the end of your time value, a bus pulls up. And maybe there's another ad and it's just got some columns on it. Maybe it's a, a, a travel agency, a trip to Rome or some such. You know what? I'd take that as a sign you're on the right path too. Maybe even a sign 
to get on the bus. That's right. Maybe you just so happen to have perfect change for the fare. And in a day and age when people don't carry cash, let alone coins around, I would say that is synchronous. So get on the bus, see what you see. Maybe you don't like to ride the bus. You know what, roll yourself a time value, find out how long to ride it for. But hey, you know what, maybe you notice somebody wearing a, a sports jersey and it just so happens to have all 41 on it. I would use that as a sign too. Because sometimes anomalies pop up. Sometimes we don't have a direction to go in. So you want to look for anomalies, something direct like that, or maybe somebody wearing like a hot pink shirt amidst a sea of otherwise blase colors. So you know what? I would say ride the bus till they get off. And maybe, they just maybe you still got some time left on your dice there. So maybe you just follow them to see where they lead you. But you know what? Give a buffer. You don't want to come off like you're stalking somebody. But hey, maybe they noticed you're following them. Well, you shouldn't have been stalking anybody, right? <laughs> that said, if there's a confrontation ensues, that kind of thing, a little bit of an awkward, uh, you know, uh, meeting of the sorts. You know what? Just be open, transparent about such things. Maybe even show them this video. And as I often like to say, maybe it just so happens to be their birthday too. And you know what? You can't dream those things up, uh, even though I did. That being said, you know what? Strange things have happened. And you know what? Everybody, I'd say, or argue, wants to see a little bit of magic in their life. And so maybe they're just apt to join you on this little journey of yours. And so they ask you where you were going. And you say, I don't know. I was following you. And maybe the two of you just decide to, I don't know, chase down some double threaded bolts so <laughs> who's to say that being said i know it's a little bit of an innocuous thing who's getting excited over double threaded bolts but like i said you never know the day might start to take on some interesting kind of theme and it's just to let you know that the universe is with you on your side and hey you know what maybe you just happen to make a new friend and you know what that's got a lot of value in it too that having been said i think you get the idea of synchronicity there so get on out there see taste touch smell intuit a little bit of magic and you understand why i brought it up so let's dive in with the birthday read shall we your month is january your day is the 14th your sign is 22 to 25 degrees capricorn of the capricorn three period specifically and your quality and element is cardinal earth all right on january 14th the day of the integrator. The hardy individuals born on January 14 are engaged in coordinating and integrating the many faceted aspects of their life and work. Their ability to see the whole picture through a, in a thoroughly organic way distinguishes them from those who get hung up on the details. January 14 people are able to forcefully pull together the strands of life and weave from them a meaningful fabric. They do not hesitate to follow what they believe to be the right course of action, and even if they go against the rules of society. Indeed, they are well aware of both possible rewards and repercussions for their actions. Danger seems to attract January 14th people who are not averse to living on the edge. Rarely, however, do they seek out excitement to merely stimulate themselves. It seems more a byproduct of their intense involvement with their cause. And for some January 14th people, perilous situations offer a chance to win out over great odds. Or die trying. And most January 14th people have an awareness of their power, but nonetheless repeatedly test it against resistance, obstacles in anything or anyone that would frustrate them. And those born on this day are surely dominant types, but usually not interested in being rulers per se. And although they have a marked leadership ability, this talent may remain dormant in them if they consider the responsibilities of high rank inhibiting. And January 14th people are almost incapable of changing their minds once it is made up. They can be hard-headed to the point of being made of stone, especially where their emotions or sentiments are concerned. Implacable, they fulfill what they see as their duty and without compromise. However, even those January 14th people who believe firmly in the common cause usually reserve the right to act independently to it, or of it, rather. 
And indeed, January 14th, people value personal liberty above all else and are some of the few people in the year who will put their lives on the line if it comes to that, rather than capitulate to pressure. Inevitably, it seems January 14th people are caught up with social and universal issues. Their personal lives, therefore, can be difficult and stormy. Mates, families, and friends must be extremely faithful as well as understanding if they are to stick with January 14th people through thick and thin. And to make matters worse, those born on this day are unfortunately quite capable of ignoring and neglecting those close to them when they are engaged in a heated life battle. Those born on January 14th may find themselves in grave difficulty if they lose everything on a big campaign or gamble, and upon turning for help, discover they stand alone. They should spend more energy on personal and social matters if they wish to retain the support of others, and learning the wisdom of sharing in many areas of life and of give and take is crucial to them, if only from a pragmatic rather than altruistic point of view. Well, all right, that was quite the mouthful of a birthday breakdown. I think they almost took up the whole page today. Not necessarily common in those regards. Uh, that having been said, uh, a little bit of a narrowly focused birthday breakdown, and a lot of these Capricorn breakdowns have been. Uh, but within that narrow scope, they tend to expand out um, and uh, provide a lot of value. And that would give us an idea of what the finer details of the day are. And uh, I think they did a really good job here with that as well. That having been said, I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary on what we just went over, maybe make some connections with other days, other things, sometimes just things I found interesting. So let's dive into it, all right? January 14th, the day of the integrator. Your hardy individuals who are engaged in coordinating and integrating the many facets and aspects of your life and work. Uh, the reading claims you have an ability to see the bigger picture in a down-to-earth way that differentiates you from those people uh, who can't step back from assessing the brush strokes to appreciate the painting. That's right. Uh, you're able to take the various aspects that make up your life and synthesize them into something that provides value. At least that's how I took it there. And much like other Capricorns, you're dedicated to push ahead uh, after a, uh, a course that uh, you believe to be the best way through and uh, perhaps specific to you. And even if that means going against what's socially acceptable. Also unique to you and perhaps one or two other Capricorns is the capacity to attract danger. Uh, but from the sounds of it, it's uh, from a very Capricorn-oriented reason, uh, because of your commitment to a cause. That's right, almost every other Capricorn is committed to some kind of cause. Uh, through using such situations as a means to test your power is a novel and wholly specific aspect just to you, as far as I've seen thus far. Uh, but the Capricorn traits once again shine through in a variety of other ways. Uh, to say being on the hard -headed, of the hard-headed sort there, uh, when it comes to changing your mind, dedication to a cause, uh, even the suffering of your personal life when it comes to the choices of your mission or your mates and family. That's right, most of them choose the mission. Uh, having said that, I believe that you do deviate from the norm insofar as reserving the right to act independently of a cause. And uh, perhaps even this putting your life on the line for such things if you're so motivated. I don't know that I've seen that come up before here in the Capricorn period. Uh, but that's not to say that others aren't also. I just don't recall it coming up to that dramatic of a degree. So it's, no it's novel, like I said. And not to drill down on the commonalities even further, but it occurs to me that one quality uh, you share with your fellow Capricorn threes specifically is just how many Capricorn qualities that you all seem to employ. Uh, in different ways, for sure, uh, but almost right down the board, these traits could just be checked off as if the authors put together a checklist to make sure they put them all in there. Um, but uh, that having been said, they seem to integrate as many of them as they could, and uh, 
uh, despite it being a somewhat narrow of focus birthday, the integrator aspect there, like I said, I think they provided a lot of value in a very expansive sort of way. But having, that having been said, that's been your birthday breakdown. So let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right, those born on the 14th day of the month are ruled by the number five as one plus four equals five and by the planet Mercury. Mercury grants great mental potential to January 14 people uh, and powers made still more concentrated and purposeful by the added influence of Saturn, Capricorn's ruler. And for those January 14th people who get knocked off balance, the number five fortunately bestows a resilient character which recovers quickly from the hard knocks of life. And if you remember at the top, I said a little bit of synchronicity there. Boom, we rolled a five. That doesn't happen all the time. Just check the other videos there. Only once in a while. So a little bit of synchronicity right off the bat. Uh, any event, that's been your numbers and your planets. So let's dive back once again into the notes. See what I have to say. So what kind of connections we can make or what information I can elaborate on for you here. Uh, the number five in the speedy planet Mercury. Uh, for great mental potential, made more concentrated by the influence of the constrictive planet Saturn. A uh, planet said to endorse structure, order, strong personal values, and taking responsibility for one's actions. Uh, Mercury, uh, the planet bringing vi uh, vivacity, or vivality rather, <laughs> Vivality, perhaps, and an impulse to uh, endeavors. They also have an attention to detail with this planet. And surprisingly, uh, they've never said that you can see the details and the broader picture. Um, also, uh, oh, they never said you couldn't see the details and the broader picture. So it was interesting. I had to dive into the back of the book to kind of pick out some details from both uh, Mercury and Saturn because I didn't feel that they really gave much information in your numbers and planets. Certainly not to the degree they have for a lot of the other days. I mean, maybe they just uh, put so much into the breakdown they felt like they could maybe skimp a little bit. Who's to say? But they went into Mer I went into Mercury and it said you can see the the finer details, uh, or they said you can see the broader picture, whatever was the opposite of in the breakdown. So maybe you can see both is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, that having been said, um, there's also a love for puzzles in games imparted by Mercury. Um, as, uh, uh, but interestingly, it said uh, they didn't say anything about it being drawn to danger. So perhaps Saturn has some kind of influence in there with as much. The game of life, if you like, and the puzzles therein. Uh, but I'm glad I dove into the planetary details in the back of the book to find the ironies and the seeming disconnects uh, only to make them seem more relevant there. Um, perhaps other, some other note to be uh, mindful of. Uh, that having been said, a lot of times uh, these things, they seem a little contrary to some extent, um, but I, I kind of like to pick those kinds of things out. So hopefully you took some value from that. And uh, we, as we move on, to your tarot. That's right, the tarot card. Uh, not a lot of folks believe in such things, but hey, it's in the book, it's your birthday. Why not see what it has to say? A lot of times we can make some more connections and uh, or even further endorse some of the things that have been said. Uh, so let we don't have to take it home with us. We can just leave it in the book. So let's get after it here. Uh, the 14th card of the Major Arcana is temperance and the figure shown is a guardian angel who protects us and keeps us on an even keel and temperance highlights the need for balance and moderation in the lives of january 14 people positively seen the age uh, the angel not i was going to say the agent the angel modifies passions in order to allow for new truths to be learned and incorporated into one's life the temperance card urges January 14th people to establish their own ethical code and resist those seductive temptations that would lead them toward false behavior and personal gain. Interesting. You know, I think they might have rewritten this one here because I don't think I've seen it uh, worded that way before. Uh, in any event, hey, uh, what do I have to say about your tarot here? Uh, the temperance card, the guardian angel that keeps us on an even keel and highlights the need for balance and moderation. Uh, the card allows for uh, new truths to be learned and incorporated into your life 
if you modify your passions there. Uh, but interestingly, the card urges you to establish your own ethical code and resist the kinds of influences that may pull you astray from your goals in favor of your baser desires. All right, just reiterating the context for you here. Um, uh, such a suggestion almost seems to, to inform the breakdown. It's so down the line, right? Um, and a lot of times these things don't necessarily line up. Well, maybe not a lot of times, but sometimes they don't line up. Here I would say this one lines up very nicely. You like to be independent of even those causes you're dedicated to? Boom, I would say that checks almost every box in that regard. Um, what else do we have here? Um, you're reserving the right to act independently, like I said, and your concerns for personal liberty. Uh, such behavior, while not unreasonable per se, is highly counter to the typical Capricorn behaviors. And I'm assuming something you may regret or see as compromising your character later if you weren't to lean into that. That's right. And that's not to say that Cap other Capricorns don't feel that same way. It's just uh, they don't bow to it. They're very, uh, they're very dedicated to that cause, almost to the point that their own self um, well-being is sacrificed for it. Self-sacrificing comes up as a weakness a lot of times. And here I would say for you, you kind of buck that trend, especially if you lean into that independence there. Uh, that having been said, that's your tarot, you know, pretty painless, I would say. <laughs> so let's move on to your health. All right. Those born on January 14 may suffer from headaches, ulcers, sleeplessness, and other symptoms of stress due to driving themselves too hard. In addition, because of their tendency to put themselves in harm's way, they may be injury and accident prone. Thus, they must learn to keep their aggressive and confrontational nature under control if they wish to preserve their health. Of course, for January 14 people, injuries may be just another obstacle to overcome. And those born on this day should learn to fully relax at the table and enjoy themselves. A wide range of tasty culinary delights is recommended. And in the same way, January 14th people should seek not only exciting and passionate experiences in their sexual lives, but also sensuous and affectionate ones. Only moderate exercise is recommended for January 14 people, hopefully of a social nature. Well, all right, highly personalized health entry for you here today. They did dive into a few things that apply to most Capricorns writ large, but again, like I said, there's some things here that are very specific for just you. Now, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, so let's dive back in. Uh, suffering from headaches, ulcers, and other stress-related issues. Uh, the reading recommends taking control of your behavior to preserve your health. Now, the uh, headaches, ulcers, and stress-related issues, um, it is common, but not very common. So um, it's one of the more rare things that they drill down on, but, it's, uh, but the stress aspect for sure pops up quite a bit because of that commitment to cause and not dealing with, uh, what do you call, their own self-fulfillment. Uh, uh, what else do we have here? No mention to mind your bones because of the danger, which is odd as they usually recommend that such things when somebody's attracted to danger and they're accident prone. They say, watch out for your bones. And here, this is interesting too, because the bones are a Capricorn body area and they really recommend taking your vitamins and supplements when diet comes up. And I don't think they mentioned that here either, but because of the body area thing, I'm assuming that's how to prevent a damage to bones there. What else do we have here? Um, Capricorn body are also is the veins and so oftentimes they recommend a, a diet that cuts out uh, dairy fat and animal fat and uh, whole wheat uh, flour and, and sugar and such. They didn't bring that up here for you but they did drill down on the uh, culinary uh, aspect there and expanding your, uh, your way into the kitchen. That's a very common thing just for Capricorns interestingly enough. Um, so maybe lend some credence to the recommendation to relax, all right? Um, we have also here culinary expansion for your diet. Um, I also say that, uh, interestingly enough, it's probably the idea of incorporating fresh foods and ingredients into such uh, things if you are expanding that way. Um, no, like I said, no mention of avoiding cholesterol type foods on account of the veins, uh, being a body, uh, Capricorn body area. 
Um, but here, here, interestingly enough, is they had sexual expression into the mix there. So it's very synchronous that we're in the bedroom. Though I, you know, might have had a little bit of an influence on that one in this one. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes it just happens that way. Uh, that, what else did I have to say here? Uh, but yeah, they also drill down on the social components too as much. So you know what? Uh, do it with somebody you love, I'm assuming. That's it. <laughs> and a little bit of the pillow talk that comes after. Though who's to say? That may stress you out. Who is to say? Uh, but in any event, uh, that's been your uh, your health. So maybe take note with such things, apply them in uh, uh, I don't know uh, in earnest or just in passing, and see if they work out for you. Who's to say? And maybe you already know what figure, uh, works for you, so I wouldn't say change it. But uh, in any event, that's your health. So let's move on to some advice. All right, some advice. I think they've been giving you a little bit of it here and there, but let's see what they have to say officially. With that being the focus. All right. Honor and dishonor are not just your personal province. Beware of, uh, be aware rather of social values and the feelings of others. Learn to compromise. No injury or injustice is cause enough to harden your heart and allow for other, or allow for your own weaknesses rather and vulnerability. All right. Real quick, fast, in and out. I'm the one that made it long because I was messing it up. Let's see what I had to say here. You have to bear with me. I had to write this in the book real tiny. So uh, let's see what I had to say here. Uh, honor and dishonor are not defined by you. Okay. Come down off your ivory tower, all right? At least once in a while, I'm guessing. Or down off your, uh, your Greco-Roman column, if you like, more aptly. Uh, you don't set the standards, and there may be a larger... Um, what do we have here? larger issues at hand all right and there might be larger issues too if you did set the standards so it's maybe a good thing you don't all right all things being considered what else do we have here be aware of social values and the feelings of others hey, you aren't the center of the universe all right even if you uh, happen to be an important part of it that's right still kind of the same through line there i would say uh, so don't harden your hearts, all right? I didn't necessarily pick up on this particular uh, aspect affecting you here, uh, but becoming cynical takes a certain uh, light out of life, I would argue. Um, and if you find yourself uh, needing help, as the reading claimed, um, uh, eh, did they claim that? <laughs> that might be the case you find yourself alone. Oh, they did claim as much. You're so focused on things and you might abandon the personal aspect of your life. Um, but you aren't alone, all right? You, you, you have that access to that if you're willing to open up to it. Uh, let's see, and the darkness is only going to make things worse, too, if you're alone. Harden that heart up. So, yeah, avoid that cynicism. Don't become jaded if you can help it. Um, just get out there. Be social. Find your ways through it. Uh, what else do you have here? Allow for weakness and vulnerability, they said. Uh, I don't think that they, uh, I don't think they recommending, recommend as much as saying something to plan for, so it's accounted for. Sound, well, I don't know what I'm saying here. Um, yeah, okay, no one, allow for weakness and vulnerability. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna have to add a little bit to this one. You know what, uh, being vulnerable, it, it presents who we are to people, and there's a certain amount of uh, humility in it. And I would say um, people, they get, they get a better idea of who you are. And a lot of these Capricorn folks, very strong, very, uh, and, and Saturn too also lends, as they say, a very off-putting or a cold exterior. But inside, these individuals are very warm-hearted. And so uh, you got you to gotta showcase a little bit of that vulnerability so people can get to know who you are. And so they're not necessarily judging you by your cover also. That's another thing. People, some people might come off standoffish when, in fact, they don't even realize it. And they're just they're perfect people to get to know. Um, so I would say uh, allow for your own weakness and vulnerability in, in so many regards. Yeah, it's, it's only going to help you in the end and uh, going to open you up to uh, more individuals being open to you. That's right. So uh, I don't know what I was trying to write there in the advice. I'll have to look at it later and see where my disconnect was. But hopefully I rectified that and pull, uh, put in a little bit of value for you, even though I was just ad-libbing it. So that being said, that's been your advice. So let's take the energy down a hair and move on to your meditation. That's right, it's your birthday, you get a meditation. Something to reflect on if you like. All right, in chess, small moves pave the way for big ones. All right, 
Not quite sure what to make of that. I don't read the meditation beforehand because I don't want to influence it for you. But here we go once more. In chess, small moves pave the way for big ones. All right. There's your meditation. Like I said, it's your birthday, your meditation. I don't want to throw some spin or interpretation on it and mess it up for you. Because then that would defeat the purpose, right? Once again, in chess, small moves pave the way for big ones. All right, your meditation in the can, as it were. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. Oh, that's right. Let's hold up the objective mirror and see where we got the bulk and maybe where we're a little more atrophied, if you like. I don't know, your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths, here we go. You're indomitable, you're courageous, and you're organized. All right, but your weaknesses. Oh, let's hold up that objective mirror, but flip it to the side that blows up your face. Yeah, maybe sh shows off some of the things you're otherwise insecure about, but that the readings recommending you maybe show to folks. So your vulnerability side there, that's right. Your weaknesses, all right. Oh, you only get two, so most times it's three. Here we go, weaknesses, you're emotionally hard. Oh, I think that's the first time that one's come up, emotionally hard. And you're uncompromising. Oh, I don't know, these are all interesting here. Well, a lot of times I like to argue that uh, if our weaknesses are something holding us back, we can, we can get through them with our strengths. You're indomitable, courageous, and organized. Hey, I think you're going to see your way through being emotionally hard and uncompromising if those are things that you wish to kind of uh, bring back a bit. But I also like to argue that in a lot of cases, our weaknesses can also be strengths. You know, sometimes I see these things trade back and forth just depending upon what day it is, depending upon the personality that the, the book is examining. Impulsive came up and traded back and forth a couple times. Um, but I also like to argue, hey, it, let's not get rid of our weaknesses altogether because they make us who we are. And for you in particular, I would say that makes a lot of sense because they said, allow for your own vulnerabilities. And uh, uncompromising in your uh, weaknesses, man, I could see that being a strength. Certainly if you're in like a boardroom situation, so you're getting over, a, uh, getting over on a, a contract there, and hey, you know what? You don't want to compromise on certain things. Um, but then again, too, maybe you should. I don't know. Who's to say? Maybe there's some things you just shouldn't. And you know what? If uh, you're not going to, maybe you need to find somebody else to make the deal with. But um, like I said, uh, emotionally hard. I would say uh, you want to try to break down some of those boundaries. Show off who you are at heart. That's right. Uh, so in any event, that's been your strengths and weaknesses. Again, a little disjointed with it, but I think you get the idea. But having said that, having relayed your strengths and weaknesses, let's move on to those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, something I like to do is not only show you who shares your company or relate to you who shares your company, but look at it from the perspective of figuring out our passions. Now, too often in life, we get out in the world and meet individuals, ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. And I think it's perfectly understandable. You know, you get out of school, right into a job so you can make ends meet. And the fatal flaw is it has, you know, next to nothing to do with what you like. And a lot of times we don't even know what we like in this life. You know, that takes time and uh, effort and work to figure out sometimes too. And so I think this is the perfect opportunity to not only see who shares your company, but to find out what they did to get in the book. And maybe we can draw some inspiration from that and uh, append them to our own passions or, or f help us figure those things out. Uh, if, at very least, you know, maybe me putting the bug in your ear about it help you stir up the fires. So let's get after it. Let's look at it through that perspective and dive into those born on this day. All right, we start off with Albert uh, Schweitzer, a German Nobel Prize winning physician, philosopher, an organist, and a, a musicologist, a theologian, and an African missionary. Man of many hats, it sounds like. We also have Yukio Mushima, Japanese playwright and a short story writer and a novelist, and wrote Confessions of a Mask and was also a militant nationalist and says committed ritual suicide. Wow, that's a first. That's come up in the book. Interesting. Uh, we also have Martin Niemöller, a German World War I U-boat commander, an ordained theologian and president of the World Council of Churches, and sent to Dachau for preaching against Nazis and survived and is responsible for From U-Boat to Pulpit. 
Boy, I tell you what, today already they're really getting into a lot of the things these folks did. Normally it's one or two words about it. Any of it. Moving on, we have John Doss Passos, a novelist and responsible for a work by the title of USA. We also have Faye Dunaway, film actress. Alan Toussaint, uh, New Orleans pianist, singer-songwriter, arranger, and a producer. We also have uh, uh, Masakai uh, Kobayashi, a Japanese film director of Kasakai. We also have Lawrence Kasdan, film director of The Big Chill. We also have Julian Bond, a civil rights leader. Uh, Julio Andrianotti, an Italian president and resigned in a scandal, it says. Sidney Biddle Borrows, a Mayflower descendant, and Madam for a High Class Call Girls, and a writer of Mayflower Madam. We also have Trevor Nunn, a British stage director and Royal Shakespeare Company head, uh, Joseph uh, Lousy, or uh, Lucy, perhaps, uh, American British stage film director, and responsible for a work by the title of the Servant. We also have Andy Rooney, a satirist and a TV journalist of 60 Minutes fame. We also have uh, uh, Thomas Tyron, who was an actor and novelist and responsible for a work by the title of Harvest Home. We also have Berth Morissot, a French impersonist painter, impressionist painter rather. We also have Cecil Beaton, a uh, British stage designer and a photographer. We also have Jack Jones, a singer, uh, Bebe Daniels, a film actress and World War II civilian worker and Medal of Freedom winner. We also have Marjorie Weinzweig, a uh, philosophy professor and responsible for a philosophical approach to women's liberation. Well, all right. There's a few names in there I recognize for today uh, that haven't been said. Were they integrators? Hmm, that's an interesting question to pose. But interestingly, we had some philosophers in there, so perhaps it's the right one to ask. Uh, that having been said, I know it's a big-ass tall order to try to take inspiration from other people's accomplishments. But like I said, maybe, maybe just putting the bug in your ear about it help you stir up the fires of your own. That's right. Because if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that you're getting out of bed in the morning and striving after a purpose or a passion, if you like. Because there's nothing better than when we have something to do that's fulfilling. So we only get so much time on this planet, so why not do something we enjoy? That's right. Uh, that having been said, that essentially rounds out your birthday read except to say your season is winter your sign is capricorn of the capricorn three period specifically and your quality and element is cardinal earth and this has been january 14th the day of the integrator from the secret language of birthdays by gary goldschneider and you stelfers i have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy and getting through it quicker than i could for you you'll save the hassle having to type it down in the browser there and it supports the channel and the bargain which i appreciate uh, but that having been said the book uh, having relayed that not altogether all too important not when it's january 14th and it's somebody's birthday that's right what's important like i said at the top Wishing you a happy birthday. So once again, happy birthday. And uh, for everybody else who joined us randomly or to celebrate, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed yourselves and you join us for your birthday read. But that having been said, uh, lest I forget, your daily numbers. That's right. Get out there. Let the universe show you it's with you on your path. Uh, see, taste, touch, smell, intuit, a little bit of magic. And like I said, you'll understand why I brought it up for you. That's right. Uh, if there's anything I wish for you, in addition to your passions on your birthday, it's that you're out there doing something fun and you're seeing a little bit of magic and realizing the universe is with you on your path. So once again, happy birthday and take care of yourselves. All right. <laughs>